US Secretary of State Antony Blinken is set to visit China this weekend. That's the first visit of a Secretary of State to China in five years. The Biden administration now pushing to improve ties between the two countries. We're very lucky. Joining us now is General Jack retired four-star general and the former vice chief of staff of the United States Army. He's the chairman of the Institute of the Study of War and is conducting a review for Congress on President Biden's defence strategy. General, great to catch up with you. Before I get your thoughts on Anthony Blinken's visit to China, I wanted to ask you about some news that broke here in Australia today. Um, the government is going to introduce new laws to block a second Russian embassy. Now, this embassy, General, was to be built on a block of land next to our parliament, like your Capitol Hill building, and they say it's a threat to national security. Here's what Prime Minister Anthony Albanese said about this today. The government has received very clear security advice as to the risk presented by a new Russian presence so close to Parliament House. We are acting quickly to ensure the lease site does not become a formal diplomatic presence. The government condemns Russians, Russia's illegal and immoral invasion of Ukraine. They have another embassy in Canberra, General, but that probably is the right move, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, let's face it. We have a long experience with Russia and before that, the Soviet Union. And their, their embassies are actually spy stations. There's just no doubt about that. That's been our experience for all of these years. It's no accident they're locating it right next to a government center uh, because they want to collect information. And they'll do that electronically using signals intelligence, monitoring radio transmissions, telephone transmissions, everything that they can do to determine what the thinking is, what the, what the process is, so that they can undermine the government. That is what they are about, and it's a good move that uh, your government is taking action to stop it from happening. The Prime Minister was asked, General, about, well, if you're that worried about the Russians on that particular plot of land, why do you allow the Russians to still have an embassy in Canberra? But I guess from a diplomatic point of view, it makes sense to still have those diplomatic channels open with Russia, despite what's going on in Ukraine. Yeah, I, I totally believe that. I mean, diplomatic relations, the opportunity to talk on a regular basis when, when, you, when a crisis develops... You can have instant communication almost face to face. That's absolutely the right thing to do. Uh, yes, we maintain diplomatic relations all through the Cold War, and at times it was invaluable to have that kind of direct communications. Misinterpretation can take place, miscalculation can take place, and we don't want a crisis moving into something that's untoward uh, as, as a result of that miscommunication. So, diplomatic relations are important. General, we probably can't underestimate, can we uh, overestimate, I should say, the visit by Anthony Blinken to China, first time in five years, which when I heard that today, I was quite surprised that it's been five years. But what do you think Blinken will be attempting to achieve here in this visit to China? Yeah, it's not that they haven't met and visited. They have, but it just hasn't been in a visit into China. I'm hoping what takes place is that Secretary Blinken uh, lays out, you know, China's behavior and why it's causing such concern in the Indo-Pacific region and the globe writ large, and, and certainly particularly what's happening uh, in the intimidation coercion of our allies in the region and what he's doing, what uh, President Xi and the Chinese Communist Party are doing to penetrate the United States is the most comprehensive penetration of American society in our history. And their aggressive behavior is something that just needs to be put on the table. I wish we would do it more publicly and do it in concert with our allies, because the, the Chinese Communist Party is so sensitive to adverse criticism. You know yourself, as soon as your government says something about China, they punch back almost immediately. That also tells you how insecure they are about it and how paranoid they are about it. And we should call them out. And I hope Pres uh, Secretary Blinken lays our cards on the table with them 
in terms of the aggression that they're displaying and how that in itself is destabilizing the Indo-Pacific region. Yeah, our best example of that is former PM Scott Morrison said he wanted to know where the COVID virus came from. Was it out of a lab in Wuhan? And immediately the Chinese started banning things like rock lobsters and wine and all sorts of other exports. I wanted to ask you about um, how serious as, as a military person do you take the aggression in the South China Sea where you saw those two warships come quite close to each other in recent weeks? Well, it's dangerous, uh, certainly, and that there was a fatality in 2001 uh, dealing with a Chinese fighter pilot doing much the same thing as this pilot was doing, and, and that kind of mishap could lead to something else, and that's obviously the concern that we have. But it's, it's part and parcel of this comprehensive campaign to, one, intimidate Taiwan, two, to intimidate our allies and partners in the region and also uh, to intimidate the United States. We're a Pacific nation, much like you are, and we have every right to sail the seas and, and fly in international airspace, and we have every right to collect intelligence on the Chinese Communist Party, and that's what we were doing. They, they do that uh, with us on a regular basis, and uh, as I said, their penetration of our civil society is, is really quite extraordinary. Uh, and we're not doing anything like that uh, with their society. So, yes, uh, th this is, I think, a very dangerous period we're in because of China's aggression. And they really resent the fact uh, what's happening here, a good thing that Australia, Japan, the Philippines, even South Korea are coming together to recognize the threat and exercises that are taking place. We're moving rotational forces in and out of uh, Australia to demonstrate to the CCP that <clears throat> this kind of behavior that, that, they're, that they're demonstrating and displaying to us is resulting in the fact that we have to come together to make certain that, that China understands we're going to stand up to this threat. We don't want them to misinterpret us and think that we're not responding, that, that we're weak and they can take advantage of us. That, that is something we don't want them to conclude. Uh, so, yes, um, I think the allies and partners strengthening the Indo-Pacific region is, is a real plus. And credit your administration, that, as well as Japan, they've doubled their defense budget, South Korea's budget's going up. And as you know, uh, President Marcos in the Philippines uh, gave up uh, four military bases that the United States could use. Three of them are pretty close to Taiwan. That is sending a loud and clear message to President Xi and the Chinese Communist Party. And, it, and it's a good thing for him to know that the allies and partners are, are coming together over his belligerence. It's his aggression in the region that is forcing us to do that. Yeah, well said, General. I mean, you and I are just about old enough to remember the Cuban Missile Crisis. What do you make of this claim from the Biden administration that the Chinese might have been using Cuba as a base to spy on the United States? Well, you're absolutely right. The uh, Soviet Union used uh, Cuba for years as a signals intelligence spy station. They had a few hundred uh, personnel assigned there. That dissolved in 2001. But now the Chinese Communist Party, going back to at least 2019, maybe sooner than that, has established a signal station or stations um, in Cuba, again, to monitor radio and telephone communication, also to monitor satellites transmissions and Internet transmissions, depending on the sophistication of the equipment that they put in there. The United States has an eye-watering capability second to none in doing this. But certainly, China wants to take advantage of the fact that these are two communist countries and Cuba is desperate for money. They are just literally broke. And China is giving them billions of dollars to establish that listening post. And I actually think China wants us to know that this is taking place. It's another form of intimidation uh, to the American people that China is operating off the coast of Florida, only 90 miles away. General, given your vast military experience, what's your read on Ukraine's counteroffensive against the Russians? Is it likely to succeed? Where do you think that's at right now? They're making three attacks as we speak. 
all of them have gained some ground. There's been some real challenges uh, with one of those attacks in the Saparisa area, but they've since been making some progress. This is going to be tough, and, and we always said that. I do think they can make significant gains. The opportunity is here. Uh, they've got the tanks, the armored vehicles, the artillery, uh, some of the air defense systems to protect their, their cities. What they don't have and what they wanted is fighter support. They requested it last year. The, the United States would never conduct conventional combined arms attack against prepared defensive positions without having attack helicopters and fighters in support of us. We just wouldn't be in a position to do something like that. The Ukrainians are doing that without that. And the Russians have attack aircraft that they're using against the Ukrainians. Now, listen, so our viewers understand. The Ukrainians do have a decided advantage because they have night sights on most of all of this Western equipment that they have and night vision goggles that the soldiers are, are wearing. And the Russians do not have that same uh, technology capability to the degree the Ukrainians have. So the Ukrainians are doing a lot of this at night. And that's how they're able to make some progress because they can't, the Russians can't pull in their aviation units to the degree that they can during the day. The other thing that defines the difference, even though the Russians have considerably more people on the ground and they have 600 miles of prepared defenses, the Ukrainians have the skill and the will, determination to fight in a way that the Russians do not have. So we certainly want the Ukrainians to play their hands well here. We expect them to do that, and we expect them to have some real success. Yeah, it's the passionate defence of your own country. General Jack Keane, such a pleasure to catch up with you. Thanks so much for your time today. Yeah, great talking to you. Thank you very much.